Thanks for joining us for a new season of Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels. I'm your host, Katie Hacker, and each week we're featuring one designer for an in-depth workshop on some of their favorite techniques. We begin with one of our favorite guests, Candy Cooper. Hi, Candy. Hey, Katie. Welcome. Hey, always good to be here. Definitely. And Candy starts our season with an answer to a question that a lot of jewelry makers ask, which is how do you bring all of these great techniques together? Right, and that's one of your specialties, is yes. using metalsmith and jewelry making techniques with stringing yeah. and other styles of jewelry. An easy technique is texturing metal like I did with these earrings. And I've just used pre-made um, findings and then just added my own like special touch. So that's what I did with these rings and I'm gonna show you how. Okay, great, and it looks like both of those are the same idea, it just looks very different depending on what type of beads you use. Right. So to get started, and I'll tell you a little bit about these once we get started. Okay. I've gone ahead and um, chosen some different uh, rings to work with. You can see these have diamond cuts, um, which are awesome for the outer rings. And then there's simpler, like smooth finish rings that I'm gonna texture. So I'm gonna just try to grab this little one and lay it on a steel block. And this has been tempered, so it's not gonna dent when we hammer on it. I'm using a chasing hammer, the round end of it. So you're just gonna keep your fingers at the back side and then you're gonna hammer all the way around the ring. And I'm kind of using a little bit of a circular motion just to kind of flare the metal as we go. I can tell you a little bit more about that later. And you can see how fast that is. And really as a jewelry designer, this is awesome because that just gives you one more thing um, that makes it your own. You know, it's already your design, but now you're actually putting your thumbprint on That's the metal. Right. So to assemble it, there's lots of different ways you can do this. You know, like on the finished pair, these are pretty much the same design, but different um, focal components, which are these beads. I've got some crystals. You can string a bead on a head pin and make a wrapped loop as one of your dangles. Or um, I'm gonna use these check pressed um, dangles here with pinch bales. And so to use a pinch bale, you can see there are two little wires here. And those are gonna sit down in your, oh, I need to pull this apart a little bit more. I Just, love pinch bales though, because they're so easy to use and they do give it a very finished look. They, so if you wanted to whip up a lot of jewelry fast, you can use these for sure. Exactly, which these are some of the designs that I've um, started wholesaling my jewelry. And so these are some of the designs that I use, tried and true, they're fast to make, and then you can change the style, you know, because everybody has their own style, you know, really easily with your center component. The next thing, um, these pinch bales come with a, um, a bale, you know, connected. So you could string them like that, but we don't need that for this design. So we're gonna just use our wire cutters and remove it. Okay. Fast. So now we have a pair. And then when you're laying your um, rings out, you can kind of play around with the different looks. So you could have that really geometric contrast uh, with the rings. You could have your crystal, you know, and each, each thing yeah, it makes it look different depending on yeah. which piece you choose. Yeah, or you can go all geometric with the, you know, the diamonds. Right. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is open a jump ring. This is about an eight millimeter, and I just opened it from side to side, you know. And then you're gonna hang all of your rings. And I don't worry about the order because you're going to be wearing them, and it really doesn't matter. There'll be some movement once they're all stacked together anyway, you mean? Right. And then we're gonna hang our component and I love how the layers look together you know me too and then the last thing we're gonna do is use a tiny ring and these are all I forgot to mention these are all solid rings they're not split so they're not okay. there's no chance of them falling off and then yeah. we're just gonna grab our other uh, square nose pliers and close up the ring nice and snug okay okay so now we have our earring how fast was that about four minutes, so fast. <laughs> and so now we're just gonna grab a French ear wire, pull this open with our chain nose pliers from side to side. Then make sure that you hang it with all your texture pieces to the front. Oh right, because some ear wires have different loops at the bottom too, so they are directional. Yeah. Some face the front and some face the side, so. If you want everything hanging a certain way, it's important to notice that before you fasten it. Yeah, and actually let's just look at some ear wires just for fun. Because these these with the coil and ball at the end add to your design. Whereas if you want a more slick, 
stream wire or streamline looking, you can try these modern ear wires. And that's what I've used on this oval design there. And I like how like contemporary those are. They're, you could wear them with a white t-shirt or, you know, on an evening out. Right. You can really dress it up if you want to. Right. So Great. do you want to see um, how to do some wrapped dangles or do you want to check out sure, some more hammering? Sure, let's do a wrapped dangle and then let's talk about hammering because there are some important things to know about the various hammers and anvils and things like that. Okay, another one of my tricks when making like fast jewelry is choose head pins that have a little stylish end to them because it's a, you didn't even have to do anything and it makes your design a little bit more special. Um, I'm just grabbing my uh, round nose pliers and make a bend. Then put your um, uh, end of your pliers into that little crook. I call it the alligator mouth. Oh, that's a good way to remember it. <laughs> like he's biting down. Right. And then you're gonna take the wire up over the top. I especially do that when I'm teaching kids how to make jewelry. And then he comes up here and he bites down again and the wire wraps around and around. There you go. Okay, kind of goofy, but it does work. And um, then you're just gonna Finish that off, and I do, I always leave mine kind of, um, you know, playful or loopy. And then trim your end and cinch in that extra wire because you don't want that getting like tangled up on anything. And now this will just replace that little um, check Perfect. angle. Easy. Looks great. Thanks. So what should we know about hammering? When it comes to hammering, um, you want to make sure that you're using like something that's blank, like a smooth surface that um, needs textured. You can start with a steel block. This one um, is a, a sound dampener. It's a rubber uh, pad that you can put down and then put your block on top. And so that is awesome because you can, and whereas if we put it over here, way louder. So that's awesome. And then there's lots of different hammers out there for jewelry making. If you need to flatten something, you can use this rubber uh, mallet, and that's um, awesome because it's not going to mar your metal. This is safe, it's not gonna ding up my design. I can hit it as hard as I can, and it's not messing up my design. Whereas if I use the chasing hammer, it totally would. Uh, steel blocks come in all different sizes, and like, this is an anvil, uh, so that you can put a ring on it, something like that, and work on it, or you can use it like we did for the rings and hammer right on top. Uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you is sometimes we wanna actually use a chasing hammer to move the metal or stretch it. Um, sometimes I explain metal is like made up almost like clay where if you want it to go in a certain direction, you push it that way, it'll move, the molecules move just like that. So I take tiny, tiny, tiny circular motions when I'm hammering and I can stretch the metal in that direction. And of course, the harder you hit, the thinner that metal is going to be. And sometimes you don't want to hit it too hard, you know? Right. So on a piece like this, when you're, you're creating a dimpling and you're also smoothing out the edge, right? Right. Well, that's a yeah. great tip. So I'm just going to go on around. And you can buy these blanks in like all different shapes. So if you're not into geometrics, there's probably something, you know, different. Everybody always says hammering is so great to get out your aggressions too. Do you find that, Katie? Definitely, jewelry <laughs> making, I always tell people it's relaxing. I know, it's relaxing. Right. It's awesome. It is. Just and keep your fingers out of the way. That's right. And if you're looking for other kinds of textures, you could um, use patterns metal stamps, like hammer it with the metal stamp. With or, the words, those are really popular yeah, still. Um, the other thing I was gonna say is these are great for like, you know, with the earrings that could easily be a pendant, you know, yeah. same idea. So I'm almost finished. And you can see how that is starting to curve the metal up a little bit. If you hate it, you can flip it over and hammer it with our plastic mallet. All Perfect. right. Okay, so now let's take a look at if we stacked this one up. We've got that cool diamond edge. Same ear um, dangle, totally different look with the same amount of time. So we would just use our jump ring 
to open it up, connect all the layers again, and we've got um, with the, our extra loop. Yeah. Same earring, two different styles. And it creates a lot of interest using the two different types of metals. Too. Right. Which is I'm such a fan of right now. I don't think I'm ever going to go back. So like here's another blank, and I know like I tend to hammer the whole thing, but you could just go sporadically to make kind of a polka dot texture. I just hit my finger. <laughs> did you see me jump? Yes, I did. <laughs> but uh, you could get, you know, kind of that, that flower is kind of a playful shape. So just a few, um, you know, taps with it and you get a polka dot. Right. It's totally different. And is that sort of similar to what you did on the earrings here? Yes, I love these. So I ended up using a buffing tool to make those flowers nice and shiny. And then I hammered these little rectangular blanks riveted all my pieces together. And it, I think it gives it a really, when you mix metals, it gives it a really artisan, like, custom, right. you know, pretty look to it.